G'day, quick brew day video dedicated to Steve James Barr. Uh, if you don't know who Steve James Barr is, you should. World famous caster on Vine Live. And uh, I'll leave a link down there for his Vine Live channel. Anyway, he rang up my cast, or Skyped into my cast one Friday night, and asked for an IPA recipe. Uh, we made it up on the spot, and he asked me to brew it as well. So I'm going to brew that today and record it just uh, to show him how I did mine. And we'll both do a tasting live on Skype or something and record it and upload it. Uh, basically, it's about six kilo of brew, so I'm just about to crush mine. Two row. Um, and 300 grams of... Uh, he originally said Cara Red, which is about 40 Lover Bond, I think. I think this is all gone from memory. So I've got some Simpsons Pale... Crystal, so it's going to be six kilo of two row and about 300 grams of, uh, of a pale crystal. We're bittering with uh, Nelson Sav, no Warrior, sorry. We're bittering with Warrior, um, Nelson at about 10 minutes, and Centennial at Flame Out. Just a basic, straightforward IPA. But uh, anyway, let's get to it. I just got to crush this grain. So today's a little bit different. My HLT is still out of action. I've blown two commercial elements. I'm getting some new ones this week, hopefully. So I'm using my boil pot, which is still going strong with my cheapo Kmart jug elements. Uh, I'll heat the water up with that, run it through that pipe just by gravity into my mash tun. Starting off with uh, 17 litres of water. This is going to max out my mash tun with the 6.3 kilo of grain. It's going to be full. It's a 32 litre mash tun. Another El Cheapo from Kmart. Okay, here we are. Give me salt addition down the way. Start the water going in. 17 litres at, uh, I'm doing it at about 73.5 degrees. Alright, that's the 17 litres. The grist. That's any dough balls, any dry spots. I think they're right. Put the lid on. Now, when I said it was going to max it out, by the time when the mash out water goes in, it'll be up to the top. So, we're going to sit around, I'm planning for around 65 degrees for this, somewhere between 65.5 and 65 degrees, I'm hoping. Um, we'll see how we go. I'll probably do. I'll probably do about an hour and a half mash, I think, on this. So I'm going to mash out with uh, ten liters of just about boiling water. Bring this up to mash out temps. Give me a 
next up. Okay. Leave that for another 10 minutes or so. The mash out. So now mash out's finished. I just start recircing or verlifying or whatever you want to call it. Some of the fluid just to get it running clear. Make sure we're not getting any grain through. I'll probably do four jugs or something like that. Four of these jugs. Pull a few jugs out and pour it back into the top of the mash. Just till it starts running clear. So I did that a few times. Now I just take, start taking the runnings into my collection bucket. When that fills up, I pour that into my boiler kettle. So, first runnings go into the boiler pot. It's lovely. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different than my normal batch barge today because I haven't got my HLT set up where I can just sort of run it into it. I've heated up some water on the stove and instead of batch barging, um, I'm sort of going to normally sparge. I'll just top this water up every now and then when I see it getting close to the grain bed like it is now. So I just threw this, I've got a strainer here, I don't know if you can see it, so it doesn't disturb the grain bed. This water is at about 77 degrees. And I'll just top it up gently. Let it go for a little while and then add some more once it gets down near the grain bed again. Closer to what a real sparge is like. On these bigger batches, I, um, by the time I do a batch sparge, because I've added so much in the original mash, I've only got about 10 litres for a batch sparge. And it, even though that's enough, um, uh, it's, it's just, it sometimes gets a bit uh, like porridge in there and it's just uh, sometimes it's just easier to do this so that's getting down near the grain bit again what if you can't what I mean by near the grain bit is the water level goes down below the grain bit I'll try and get a close up of it it's probably a bit hard to see under there, but the grain bed's probably about a centimetre under that water. So I just let it run for a little while. And it's starting to get pretty close to the top of the grain bed here. So I put my strainer back on and just pour some more water in just so it keeps that level above the grain bed. Ideally, I could sit here and slowly pour it all the time, but it's not really needed. And while I'm doing that, of course, the tap's still open and I'm collecting runnings. Once this water's gone through, that'll be all my runnings and I'll put it into the boil pot. Okay, well, we've got all the runnings in the boil pot now. We're at our, is this a measuring stick I use? Just under 32 litres, which is exactly where I want it. Get it up to the boil, we'll start adding our hops. And even with all that muck around, I'm spot on 149. Exactly where I want to be for pre-boil gravity. Good. 1049. Well, I've got the boil nice and settled down now. I'll probably turn it up a little bit actually. And the first edition, the 60 minute edition, is 25 grams of Warrior. Now let's 
that's been boiling for 50 minutes. Got the 10 minute addition of 25 Nelson, 25 grams of Nelson. Come back in five minutes, put in a half a Werflock tablet, then five minutes to go. There goes the Werflock, crushed up. It mixes in. Alright, there's time up. Get my flame out hops in, which is uh, 40 grams of centennial, and I've chucked a little bit of mosaic in there, about 20 grams, just because I had it laying around, and I like my hops. I'll turn off the elements. One, two, grab a spoon. And I do the manual whirlpool. That works fine for me. Only takes about, I don't know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Get a nice smooth whirlpool up. Trying not to bash into the side of the pot like I am. That should do. I'm going to whack the lid on, leave that steep for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I'll get my chiller set up. So we're all set up now. The water's running. We're coming through at about, might be a bit hard to see, about 22 degrees. I'll turn the water up a little bit and get it down a little, little bit cooler than that, down to about 20 degrees, where I want to pitch at. Just have that going into my fermenter. And I'll turn it up a little and see what the whirlpool has done. Made a big pile in the middle. There's a heap of hops in this recipe, as you saw. So there's quite a big lump. I might have to stop that soon. It'll start sucking hops through. So there we are. We're cooled, or chilled, in the fridge, just about ready to go. Uh, very high tech sticky taping there of the stubby cooler or can koozie or whatever things they're called to keep the uh, probe against the fermenter and we'll see how we go and I'll add the yeast in a minute but you probably don't need to see that it's just me pouring yeast in I'm using a, a 1056 Y yeast American ale yeast this time I've made a starter anyway cheers it's uh, Steve's IPA in. Um, wasn't a very detailed video, but it uh, wasn't meant to be. Uh, if you want any more details, just ask, or I can flick you a link to some of my other videos to show you my full process. Um, it wasn't a recipe that we've made before, but we still think it's going to be a good one. As I said, it was made up on the spot. Uh, Steve told me what hops he had, um, so I just threw in some uh, two row and some crystal and said, try this. Um, anyway, we'll see how it goes in a couple of weeks. Cheers, Steve. Cheers.